Pencil, Pencil power. power. Why hello there, art ventures. In this video, we are going to be learning a very simple and straightforward process on how to take your line art and create it into a digital painting. So this is like very step-by-step -step and beginner friendly. And I'm actually just going to use all the brush packs from Loish's free, um, free brush pack set. So if you're following along and you want to download this pack, then you can, you can, you know, follow along and use all the brushes. So I actually used the, for the inking, I used this, uh, this uh, technical pen that comes with Procreate in the inking section for the rest I'll use stuff from Loish. So we're gonna switch to this Loish oil pastel because the first step we're going to want to do is lay in the flats. So the flats are the local, quote unquote, what they call local color, which means the color when it's not being affected by light and shadow. So, you know, a skin tone might be somewhere around here as a local color. But we're actually going to do something interesting and just choose a really random color to start filling stuff in with. And I'll show you why in a moment. So there are two ways. Okay, so then the other thing is you're going to want your line art on one separate layer. So I have my sketch and then I did the line art on top. I made the sketch disappear. I'm putting another layer underneath the line art. So I'm going to go and select that layer, and now when I paint, it will appear underneath like so. So there are two ways you can fill in your flats. You can go ahead and do what I'm doing now, which is just to, to color it in, which is a fine method. Or you can also use the lasso tool, which I will demonstrate in just a moment. I won't be too meticulous about this because uh, this is mostly for demonstration purposes. So I'm not going to like zoom in and try to get every piece perfect. And then you can also drag the color there and fill in the, the spots once you've gotten all the edges. So that's one way to do it. And you see I've filled in all of the skin tone in one color. So what we're going to do, even before you start the flatting process is potentially start thinking about what the major areas of color are. Um, Cause we kind of want to group them together. So for instance, the skin tones are all one color. The hair will all be one color. Uh, this part of the clothes will be one color. And then this part of the clothes will be one color. So we've got one, two, three, four areas. And then there are little details like the amulet and things like that. And you know what I'm just realizing? I want the eyebrows to be on the same, to be the same color as the hair. So I'm going to erase that out. There we go. Okay. And so, so the one way to do it is just to color things in like that. The other way to do it, so I'm going to make a new layer for my next color. I'm actually going to put it underneath the face so that I don't have to worry. I can paint underneath it and it'll make work, the work a little simpler. And maybe I'll do this for like his turtleneck. So I'll select this lasso tool. And this one, it's nice to zoom in a little bit. And now we're just going to select the area, oops, that I want colored. Like so. And basically we're just gonna take that, the color and just fill it in with like the, a paint bucket type tool. What's happening? Why is it? My thing has stopped responding. Okay, I've charged my Apple Pencil, made a coffee, and we're back. By the way, I just wanted to mention that this uh, character prompt is from the Reddit R character drawing, which is a really cool place where you can post prompts and artists can, you know, draw them if they want and share them and so it's a really cool place to look for inspiration or if you'd like an artist to create to create their rendition of your character you can share it there too so yeah check it out it's a really fun place um also shameless plug this is a follow-up video for the last um mentoring art mentoring session i did where we worked on this stuff so if you're interested in custom one-on-one -on -one art mentoring 
I'll leave a link in the description below. Cool, let's get back into it. So I finished making the selection and I'm going to take this color and just fill it in like that. And remember we're on a separate layer. And then I'll see that maybe in this corner, I need to just fill it in a little better. But, um, but the reason I have chosen these flat colors that are very random is that, and why I'm doing them on separate layer is that separate layers is that now we have the ability to customize them through this little magic wand area, going to the hue, saturation, and brightness. And we can start to change the hue and look for something maybe a little orange, less saturated, and see we can fine tune and find the exact skin tone that we want. So I'm not gonna be too picky, I think something like that should work. And then I can do the same with the turtleneck. We can just change it. I'm thinking just making this a dark, like gray. So make it almost no saturation. Maybe go to a blue. I usually don't like things to be completely uh, black or white. So maybe just leave a tiny, tiny bit of saturation in there. Something like that. And then I can always go in and sample the color by um, either holding down this thing right here and clicking, or I have it set so that when I just click with my finger, it automatically holds it down. Okay, cool. So there's a little bit of layer management, but it's not too bad. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, skip ahead in the video and flat in the rest using one of these two methods. So I put in my main flats and the last little step is going to be to do the the little, the last details like the eyes and the amulet stuff that isn't one kind of bigger area of color. So I'm gonna make a layer on top of all of these and I'm just going to go ahead and do those on their own. There won't be as much ability to customize the individual colors if you do it this way, but I find if doing every little tiny thing in its own layer, it gets to be a little bit much, a little too much layer management. So I like to kind of um, do, do a bit of both and do the major areas like this and then just the minor things. I can just repaint if I need to change the colors. So that'll be like the amulet, the eyes. Let's actually have the, for a little color consistency, we will have the eye match the color of the amulet. Okay, cool. All right, so the next step is we're going to want to add in our shadows. So the way we'll do that is to create a new layer on top of everything. And we're going to click the N and change this layer to multiply, making sure that it says M here now. And then also lower the opacity to somewhere between 25 and 30% maybe, okay? And then we will choose a color that we want to represent the shadows. So the basic way of choosing your shadow color is you usually never want to go for a completely desaturated gray or black, you want there to be a little bit of color in there. And the color is going to be the opposite of the color of the light. So if your light source is the sun, then you're going to have a yellow light, right? And so in that case, you will need the shadows to be on the opposite side of the color wheel and be somewhere in the purple area. If your light is a you know, like a red light from a car or something like that, then the, um, you know, you'll go to, oops, then you'll go to the opposite here and make, make it some kind of green, greenish color or bluish color. So let's just pick a pretty standard light source for the sun. And then purple is usually a super, um, like reliable color to choose. And so I usually like to go somewhere around here so it's not too dark and not too saturated, maybe a little bit darker. Um, but again, this is something you can experiment with. And then also because it's on its own layer, you'll be able to adjust this color easily and play around with it. 
So we'll choose a color and we'll start to shade in. We're assuming that our light source is coming from here. So I'm going to look at some of the planes of the face. So I know there's this, this plane right here. I know the cheek, the cheek coming down to the chin. That's going to be a, a change of plane. So I'll put that in shadow too. Those will be the first ones I'll start off with. And maybe put all this hair in shadow. And again, I'm not going to worry about being too neat and going outside the lines. I'll do some little round things like that to, to help indicate the texture of the hair with the shadow a little bit. And you know, this is, this is a, you know, a big part of art is kind of understanding light and shadow and where you'll find it and kind of starting to get more confident in placing down shadow and light. So, um, I can't go into too much detail about that here, but just understanding the planes of the face and, um, you know, studying what other artists are doing. You can look at stuff that's cell shaded is a little bit easier to understand because it has these hard edges like I'm doing here. This would be kind of considered cell shading. So if you look at animation type stuff or probably just search on Google for cell shading, you'll get a lot of nice examples that you can use to start understanding um, shading shading in a more simple way. I think that's a good place to start. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to worry about this too much, and we're just kind of going to put this in. But you can see already that this is, I would say, you know, 90% of the um, of the process. You just put in the flats and then create this new multiply layer and throw in some shadows. You've, like, this is, you know, the first the first kind of step in the digital painting uh, process. And you could consider this, you know, done here. I'm going to show you a few more things that I would do, but I just wanted to kind of keep it simple and let you know, like, okay, from here, you know, this is, this is the whole, this is the basic process. But the next thing you might want to do is the exact same idea of what we did here and adding the shadows on its own layer with a, doing the same with light. So adding like a highlight layer. So I'll make a new layer and there's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different options when it comes to highlight layers of what you can choose. So let's make this new layer. And then there's things like screen, lighten, overlay, soft light, hard light. So I would say choose one and experiment. You can always change it. Uh, so maybe I like overlay a lot of times. I don't know if I use that for the highlight layer as much, but, um, but let's try it out. And then I'm going to choose a yellow color because we had we decided the sunlight and also I'm going to lower the opacity to maybe you know 20 to 30 percent maybe I'll need it a little bit higher for this let's make the opacity 50 percent yeah so now I can come in and add highlights wherever the sun will be catching most strongly Cool. And then the thing that with these layers, it's nice is that they automatically adjust the color based on the color underneath. So you can see here that when I put the yellow on the blue, it does something different than when I did it on the skin tones and when I did it on the hair. So this makes the whole digital painting process a lot easier because it takes out a lot of the guesswork on, you know, which color do I need to use. So let's just leave it like that for now. That'll do fine. Let me put a little on the rim there. All right, great. So now we've got, you know, our shadows, our highlights, and our flat colors. So we're, I mean, we're basically, you know, home free. But here are a couple other things we can do to really bring the painting to life and some other techniques you might want to experiment. So this would be... I would call this the bonus section, all right? So the first thing is um, we can, since we have all of our flats on different layers, we can now like do certain things like, let's go to the skin tone, 
I'm going to alpha lock it. I click on it and I go to alpha lock there. And now it won't paint outside. So when I'm on that layer, uh, it will not paint outside of the area that I've already painted. So see, I can, if I wanted to, I could add some cool, like crazy tattoos, which would be sick. But since this isn't, this isn't my character, I'm more drawing someone else's character. So I'll stay true to the prompt and just kind of leave them as is. But what I wanted to show you is the idea of using a slightly warmer. So I select the skin color and I go oops, select the skin color and I move slightly more red and slightly down into the right. So darker and more saturated to get a warmer version of that skin tone. And I'm going to go here and maybe choose the soft shade in this brush pack. And you see the opacity is a little bit low, so it bends. So I'm going to make this really subtle. I just want to add a little bit of red to the ears and to the nose especially. And maybe a little bit on the cheeks. Definitely don't want to go overboard on the cheeks, so I'm just going to keep it super subtle. Something like that. And be on the lips too. So places where there's a little more blood flow you might want to add a little bit of a red hue. I'm actually going to go back and make the cheeks even lighter. I just want that to be oh so subtle. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so you can do that in a lot of places. So one really cool place to do it, let's say, is the hair. So I'll alpha lock the hair. I'll make this much bigger. I'm actually going to choose a, you know, maybe make it a little more blonde on the top and I can just go in and like create a gradient there. This can work really cool for crazier colors. So if you wanted to make the hair like, so I can do, I can just change this hair to green and then take like a blue and do like a gradient there. Like that looks awesome. If this character, if I was just going crazy with this character, he would look completely different than what we're doing. But let's go back to our original. And so just kind of keeping it subtle there. Um, and so, yeah, this can work in all sorts of places. For the tunic, I will, uh, what is it called? Alpha lock this. Take the color, maybe get a slightly darker color with a slightly different hue. Maybe a little more than that because I have this sort of. And just do like a little, just do a little gradient from the bottom. Kind of brings the whole thing to life, feels a little less flat. So that's why you can use the alpha lock and, um, and like a softer, larger brush to create these cool gradients. Next thing I want to share is going back to the shadow layer. You can also soften things up by coming in here with the smudge tool and let's go to the soft shade brush again. And then we can just like, we can soften up some of the edges if we want to not have such a hard, hard transition. So like on the cheeks, you know, maybe uh, here on the neck. So this will give you a different style than the kind of hard edged cell shading. You can mess around with the quality of the sh edges of the shadows after you've placed them down. Cool. Um, the next thing to mention is that you can create even more depth if you want by creating a second multiply layer on top, the same exact way that we did before. And you can even choose the same exact color. Let's take this kind of thing. And now if I want to have a second layer of shadows, like a darker shadow in here, maybe a darker shadow under the chin, I'm still on the soft brush. So that's kind of cool. And I'll erase out this corner. So you can start to add, you know, even more depth to your shadows this way. And more depth to your painting. The same is true of highlights, but what I like to do for the next layer of highlights is actually create a layer on top of even the line works so on the very top. And I'll go back to my uh, oil pastel 
and go for a completely white. Usually I don't use completely white or completely black except for in this instance. And here I might come in and start adding some highlights, so like to the nose, to the eyes. Maybe there's a thin, you know, highlights in some places. Maybe the onk is a little bit shiny, so add the highlights there. So that can be a cool extra level. And then just to show you this little edge of the um, of the tunic here on the bottom, it should be this goldish color, right? So let me show you how I might work with that. So you could just go on the exact same layer, it's alpha locked, and just find the gold color and paint it over which depending on how much customization you want, you know, then that that can be fine. And you can see how the shadow layer on top still affects it. So one thing to be careful of is if you start sampling colors, turn off the shadow and highlight layer so you can get the straight to the flat colors. So you could do it like that, which is totally fine. But now if I want to adjust the hue, it's going to adjust the hue of everything, which actually can be really cool for coming up with new color schemes and outfits, you know, like that's, that's a whole nother vibe right there. But you can also do it on its own layer on top of this one and do something called a clipping mask, which is kind of like alpha lock, but it uses the layer underneath to let you know where you can paint. So now I'm still, painting within the confines of this blue tunic area, but it's on its own layer. And so what that allow me to do is to adjust the color and add effects like its own little gradient and stuff like that um, on my own. So I can go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I can just adjust that color. So maybe something like like that. I want to make it more subtle, but okay, that's fine. So do something like that. And then I can also do something like, for instance, turn down the opacity, which so now it kind of mixes with the blue a little more so that the color has a little more harmony with the blue around it. So I put it on maybe 86% opacity. That looks fine. Cool. And so the very last thing is the same alpha lock um, idea can work, method can work with the line art. So you can come in here and go into the line art, alpha lock it, and then start choosing colors to paint the, um, the line art itself. So I'll show you what, how that looks. I'll take a darker brown and maybe these hairs, these kind of curl hairs on the inside. I can paint those as a dark brown. Maybe do I want all the hair to have that dark brown uh, outline? Maybe I do, so let me try that out. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, cool. And then for instance, um, you're going to have to be a little careful here because it'll paint over your lines you want to keep black. And so one other thing that could be cool to do is to take the eyes and choose a similar a cool color, maybe even lighter blue, and then paint the outline of the eyes in that color instead of having the black. Cool. Oh yeah, let's get the eyebrows to have this uh, hair color. And so, yeah, this is a, another technique, you know, if you want to try something different with the line art rather than just keeping it black. And so maybe for the skin tone for this cheek is a little bit strong the way it is. So let's make a little, let's make it a different color. Something like that. Cool. So I think this gives you the idea right now. I could just kind of keep messing around and, um, and playing around with this. I could change the lip colors, give them some nice lipstick, right? Very simple. 
But that's it. Now you've got all the different tips and tricks you need to start doing some digital painting in this, you know, very step-by-step -step and beginner-friendly style. If you do create some stuff, I'd love for you to share it with me. So feel free to leave a link to whatever your social media is in the description or send me a message at pen underscore n underscore blade. Um, I don't have a pencil power instrument. Record scratch. Uh, okay, so I actually did make the pencil power Instagram, and of course it's at pencil, pencil power. power. So, we'll see if I post there, but you can definitely be one of the few elite in the nose to get in on that account while it's still fresh. All right, that's it. I hope that this video was helpful and has imbued you with just a little bit more. Pencil, Pencil power. power. Cool.